So during this presentation, we're going to provide some general information about conference proposals and share some examples, um, as well as some best practices and tips. Throughout the conversation today, we're also going to discuss our own experiences with uh, submitting our own conference proposals. And then lastly, we're going to provide some additional resources and leave time to answer your questions as well. To give you a bit of context about conferences, um, most fields and disciplines do have professional organizations. So um, you might have heard of American Nursing Association or the American Psychological Association or National Association of Social Workers. Those are just to name a few. Um, many of those professional organizations hold conferences every year or two. Um, and those conferences or meetings, they're either in person or online, and the members come together uh, to share their research, to network, as we were just talking about, and also to develop policy uh, that helps to shape their fields. So there are a lot of different types of conferences. Um, there are those large in-person conferences associated with those big organizations that we just mentioned. Um, there are also small in-personal or in-person uh, regional conferences, as well as a variety of online conferences held um, by different institutions and organizations um, as well. So within those conferences, there are typically several options for types of presentations as well. So you might have uh, an opportunity to do a one-hour talk on a topic. You could be part of a roundtable conversation on a topic of concern within your field, or you might create a poster presentation uh, to share with others as they're walking around a large conference room. So you see a few photos here on this slide, um, and these include a few of us from the Academic Skills Center, um, including myself, and we were actually visiting one of our colleagues who was sharing her own poster presentation. And so you can see her poster in the background um, of a couple of those photos. Um, for online presentations, you typically would need to create a PowerPoint um, presentation and use an online presentation tool such as Adobe, um, very much like what we're doing here today with the webinar. Um, and then you'll see on the example here, um, an example of an Adobe presentation on this slide as well. So when you submit a conference proposal, it's really important to understand these different um, options and formats of proposed um, sessions. So for example, if you're not comfortable uh, leading a conversation by yourself for an entire hour, which quite honestly, many of us are not, so you're not alone if, you're, if that's something you don't want to do, um, but maybe you would want to start with something like a poster session instead. Um, so look into those requirements, choose an option that's really a good fit for you. Um, and then lastly, some conferences may require you to create um, additional resources such as handouts um, or papers as well. And so you're going to want to plan for any of those requirements that might be involved. So before we get into some of our best practices for creating a proposal, we wanted to share um, a few different calls for proposals just to give you uh, an idea of how unique uh, each individual conference can really be. So this is our first example. Um, and this is actually a call for proposals uh, for a small conference held at a college every year. Um, and you can see we've highlighted some key pieces of information on the slide. First, uh, you might notice that there are some word limits for the abstract and summary. Um, make sure you pay special attention um, to any of those types of limits of word count. Um, personally, I once wrote a proposal and then found out I was way over the expected word limit, um, which as you can imagine, required quite a bit of editing and time. So from that experience, I really do recommend that um, you, know, you really pay attention to those requirements early on before you start uh, writing your proposal. Um, you'll also notice that the topic here is pretty broad. Um, so for this particular conference, it can be anything related to the teaching of psychology. So in this case, as long as it's related to teaching in this specific field, you could um, create a proposal. Uh, not all conferences are going to be this broad, um, and as we'll see in a minute, others can be a lot more specific. Um, lastly, you do see that there are a few different options here for type of presentation. So you have that traditional oral presentation, a workshop, which would be a bit more interactive and hands-on, and then also a discussion forum, which uh, would most likely be a conversation led by a couple of experts on a specific topic. 
And then lastly, there is a poster session at this conference. But you'll notice that for this conference, um, that poster presentation option is limited to only undergraduate students. And so that's something you want to watch out for, is any limitations um, when submitting proposals. You want to make sure that you meet the criteria for the session that you're choosing. So to sum up, this conference is pretty broad, um, with a few different options for talking about your topic. So let's move on to our next example. And so this example is for a virtual conference. So this is online, and it's right here at Walden. Um, it's actually being hosted by the Academic Skills Center and the Center for Social Change. And you'll notice that there are some specific guidelines here, and the topic is less broad than our last example. So for this conference, the presentations must address ways that students have used and applied the skills that they've acquired in their Walden program um, uh, to enact social change. Okay. Um, and you'll notice we've highlighted some key pieces of information on this example, too. Um, first, you're limited to three presenters. Um, and this is something you uh, want to keep in mind for conferences, too. There might be um, limits on the number of presenters depending on the type of presentation that you might be um, submitting for. So you really want to be careful of that. Um, review those limitations before you start reaching out to colleagues to collaborate. Um, you don't want to be in that situation where you've asked too many individuals to co-present with you and then not be allowed to include them all. Um, you'll also notice word uh, limits on this example, too. And there's also clear instructions that you should not use your dissertation abstract as your submission. Um, instead, it gives some pretty specific guidelines to write a unique description of your proposed um, discussion. Um, and then you're also required to include two clear learning outcomes for this conference um, that you would really want attendees to walk away uh, with from your session. And then lastly, you'll notice that you're required to include an interactive activity as part of your presentation to make it engaging. So that's something that you'd also need to plan um, and think about and um, figure out how you could incorporate that into your proposal as well. So to sum up, this uh, conference is specific in the focus um, of social change. It has some uh, clear pieces of information that uh, must be required as part of the proposal that we didn't see in the previous example. So let's look at one more example. So this is our final example, and this is from a yearly conference um, held at a university. And you'll notice this one has some additional requirements we didn't see in our other examples, which is why we chose to include this one. Um, and so for this particular conference, um, you would actually be required to also submit a one-page paper or um, a white paper after your acceptance for the conference, depending on the type of presentation that you've been accepted for. So there is this expectation also that presenters would submit um, electronic versions of materials to share with conference attendees um, as part of a conference app. So that's something that you'd also need to think about and plan ahead for um, to have those electronic resources available and submitted on time as well. So as we think about these last three examples, we saw there's um, some very specific guidelines and expectations um, for each individual conference. And because each of these conferences can be so different, it's really important to uh, review all those requirements and expectations uh, before you start uh, putting together any proposals. So now that we've discussed um, some important background information, we've talked through some examples, I'm going to go ahead and pass things over to Joe uh, to take over for the second half of the presentation. Yep.